as if I'm not stressed enough looking for college accommodation, I'm seeing all the reports this week of students being scammed. Uh, is there a way of knowing if you're about to be swindled? Well, I mean, this is a really big thing and it happens every single September because scammers are clever people and they target people who are vulnerable. And right now, there are fewer people who are more vulnerable than students looking for accommodation because we all know how difficult it is to find accommodation. And one of the typical tricks that scammers, a scam artists engage in now is They'll, they'll post the house on Facebook or on Instagram or wherever it might be, and then people will make contact, and then they'll come up with some ridiculous reason why they can't be there in person. But if you, if you wire me the money, well, then you'll be guaranteed the house, and I'll meet you in the house on a certain day, and we'll give you the keys. The only way you can ensure that you're not being scammed is you have to go down the old school route. You do not give anybody any money until you're literally standing in the house with the keys in your hand, because otherwise you are vulnerable. And people do become intoxicated by the allure of the online. And it's understandable because we all live our lives in the mm -hmm. virtual world now. But until, you, until you're physically in a house, and you're having a, car, a, a, a correspondence with the person who's going to rent you the house, you don't hand over any money, no matter how desperate you might be. But it is understandable because people are desperate. And like they're thinking, exactly, they think they're getting an edge over everybody else, so they're willing to take the risk. Now, I've spoken to students who've been scammed out of thousands of euros because of this very reason. And the, the, the criminals are very plausible because that's the business they're mm. in, and to, for want of a better word. So their job is to convince you to give them their money. So it's not like they're totally outlandish, but it really is something to watch out for. And the only piece of advice I can give this, uh, this viewer is, if in doubt, just walk away. Just don't yeah. do it. Don't Seems do too good it. to be true. But, but, but you mentioned keys. There have, we, we've heard stories of people who have paid money, been sent keys, got to the door, Keys don't work, should I? Yeah. Uh, and uh, and it, that, the, the, the various layers to these scams can make them even harder to, 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 to see mm. through. But the bottom line, and I hate to say it, but the bottom line is just don't trust anybody. <laughs> and, like, it's, like, not in Can all, we trust you? Not in all of life, but in these particular instances, you've got to be very careful, otherwise Absolutely. you will be careful. scammed. Okay. Like, like if you were to use a credit card, doesn't matter. Just don't send money. No, absolutely. Well, I mean, to the, yeah, I mean, if you use a credit, if you give somebody your credit card details. Yeah, well, yeah. They can you're kind fun. of inviting them mm. to yeah. use those credit card details to do all sorts of things. OK, OK. Um, this has been a mad one from today. Aideen in Dublin got in touch. I found a pair of Vasia runners selling on the Brown Thomas website today for a tenner. I bought them, but then hours later, my order was cancelled because the shop said the price was a mistake. Surely they have to honour the contract. That's what I would have thought as well. No, they don't. Not under the law. Now, there's two things at play here. First, um, the price that a, that a shop puts has, has, has listed as, as the cost of a product doesn't mean there's a contract in place. It's called okay. an invitation treat. So let's say if I have a telly on a shelf and it's priced at a tenner and it should be 100, you can't go up to the till and say, well, it's priced at a tenner on the, on, the, on the shelf there. I want it for a tenner because there's no contract in place. But in this instance, it's slightly different because people have actually paid money for the shoes. So you could argue that, oh, well, I've given you the money. A contract is now legally in place. So give me my shoes for a tenner. But the, under consumer law, if a genuine error is made, well, then the contract is null and void because you as the buyer can't profit from the mistake that I've made as the seller. So B BTs is within their rights to cancel the orders of all these people. And these, some of these people are very upset, but there's a couple of things I'd say about it is, sometimes you know a retailer or an airline or something has made a mistake mm. mm -hmm. and you buy the product because you know you're getting it at a massive discount. And I would have very little sympathy for people in that instance, because they're just looking to get the shoes for less because they know there's a mistake being made. Uh, other people might have genuinely bought the product because they thought they were getting a, re a really good deal. But what BTs have said subsequently is they've apologised and they're offering everybody who was impacted a 20% discount on their next online purchase.